Welcome back to another episode of The Lofty Lender. Uh, this week, uh, it's me. It's a solo episode. You know, I uh, wasn't able to get everybody's schedules coordinated uh, to get somebody lined up for this week, but I definitely have some ideas that I'd like to share with you guys about AI. Uh, specifically, my realtor partner friends out there, talk, I'm constantly talking about how AI is changing the world, changing the, the real estate world, uh, and really changing my business and how I operate. So uh, just wanted to come to you guys with a few stories, a few ways that maybe, you know, it's impacted me. Maybe it's, uh, it's going to impact you and, and you can, you know, garner something from my stories today to, uh, to hopefully help yourself out with AI. Because I've heard it several times, those who don't adapt to AI are those who will probably no longer be in their industry. AI is really going to take over a lot. Uh, and that really leads me into the first point, which is artificial intelligence and its safety. It's so before I talk about how amazing it is, I also think it's important that we stop and talk about how dangerous it is. Uh, first up, we have OpenAI safety lead Jan, uh, Jan Like. He quit, right? So he was op over at OpenAI working on ChatGPT. Uh, they're the company that owns uh, ChatGPT. And he stepped down from the job and he said it was one of the hardest things that he ever had to do. Uh, but he was not getting the support from the rest of OpenAI that he really needed in order to create a safe environment. And uh, he really felt like OpenAI was prioritizing growth over, over safety. AI is insane, right? The, uh, the ability that it has to continually grow and learn and the, the knowledge that it has is exponential. They've already run it against, you know, some of the hardest tests out there and it's getting scores better than anyone's ever seen before and it's only getting better so it is incredible but there are definitely things that need to be safeguarded as well um, there are a lot of dangerous things that come with it as far as um, you know weaponry uh, Pope francis actually recently just released or went out to the g7 meeting and he came out and uh, on, April, on June 14th, the Associated Press wrote an article saying Pope Francis challenged leaders of the world's wealthy democracies on Friday to keep human dignity foremost in developing and using artificial intelligence, warning that such powerful technology risks turning human relations themselves into mere algorithms. Francis said politicians must take the lead in making sure AI remains human centric so that decisions about when to use weapons or even Less lethal tools will always remain made by humans and not made by machines. We would condemn humanity to a future without po hope if we took away people's ability to make decisions about themselves and their lives by dooming them to depend on the choices of machines, he said. We need to ensure and safeguard a space for proper human control over the choices made by artificial intelligence programs. Human dignity itself depends on it. So. Pretty powerful stuff there from the Pope. Uh, he's definitely one of the most progressive Popes that we've had in the past. And uh, he's all over AI. And he is really worried that it's, it's, it, it needs to have some safeguards to it, right? Uh, Open AI, after Jan left, they went on to make a statement that the uh, super alignment group will be folded into broader research efforts at the company. Meaning they're no longer going to be putting safety at the forefront of their operations. And just reading stuff about Open AI, they're one of the you know, premier AI uh, companies out there and that they release some of the coolest technology as soon as it comes out, it's immediately available to everybody and it's, it's incredible. Um, but even within open AI, there have been reports that it may not necessarily be the safest place. Uh, you know, if there's a whistleblower out there, it might, that person may not come to light because of the uh, scary things that have happened to some people. Uh, Forbes.com released an episode earlier this morning, 6.15. Uh, that Apple will install ChatGPT in its operating system and Siri, impacting more than 2 billion active devices worldwide. This extends the reach of OpenAI, which already had approximately 180 million active users, not to mention the millions who use Microsoft's GPT-4-powered Copilot. The announcement comes soon after a recent exodus of two senior OpenAI executives focused on AI safety and an open letter signed by 11 of OpenAI's current and former employees asking for more protection when speaking out about AI safety concerns, just like I mentioned. These prior incidents, being the previous departure of senior executives and questions around Altman's firing and rehiring suggest that the company may be prioritizing growth over AI safety. 
As a leader in the AI race, OpenAI's approach to safety and security should be closely scrutinized and potentially overhauled. So those are kind of all the things that I wanted to bring light to uh, as you think about AI. There are definitely guide rails that need to be put in place. There are definitely some scary pieces to this, uh, especially as it relates to maybe nuclear warfare, or, um, you know, how companies or countries are going to interact with each other, interact with consumers. There's a lot of scary stuff out there. But on the flip side, using it in the correct way and using it in a way that's going to benefit you and going to help you get ahead, those are some things I want to talk about today. First off, I'm going to talk about a story. I don't know if any if, if you all follow me on Facebook, but uh, I pushed out a story a couple of months ago, I guess. Uh, my son and I were playing around with ChatGPT, and I told it, hey, I, I need you to give me a prompt to create a story. And uh, I want my sons to stand here, and they're going to go through and answer some questions that I have. And so it was great. We did. Uh, my, my sons came up with Superman and Timer, The Magical Adventure. ChatGPT came to me and says, okay, so in order to create the story, I need you to answer the following questions. For your main character, do you still do you want the main character to be a person, an animal, or maybe even something magical? What's their name and what's one unique trait about them? So my kids said that they wanted it to be a person and the person's name was Superman. And one unique thing about him was that he could stop earthquakes or something like that. It was silly, but uh, that's the best part about ChatGPT. The things that my kids came up with are just any other kid, right? They come up with some of the craziest stuff that comes off the top of your head. And if I was to sit down and try to write a story about how a boy named Superman with his pet lion and earthquakes were stopped or, or, or the antagonist, I, I have no idea how I would come up with that. I put in that information along with the sidekick or best friend, which I said, like I said, is the lion. His name was Timer. Uh, that was thanks to Caden. Um, and it, came, it asked me for an antagonist, gave me some questions to answer there, supporting characters and a setting. And, uh, and it, of course, my son wanted it to be in the African savanna because at that point we were reading books about the African savanna. It was amazing. Uh, if you don't uh, follow me on Facebook already, go check it out just on my personal page. You can just search Kyle Golden Fenegger, Tall Money Man, and uh, you'll be able to find that story. But it's amazing. And then I asked it, Hey, go ahead and create me a an image for that uh, story, and it made just a beautiful uh, African Saharan desert with the sun coming up, and a little boy sitting next to a lion that's in all its glory. My son just looked at it. And he's like, "Dad, that is amazing. Can can we print that, buddy? My printer is not that good. If we printed it, it wouldn't look nearly as good as it does on the computer. But the the graphics are." In insane with chat gpt as long as you stay away from words their wording the, the words don't usually get spelled correctly so um just a little food for thought there but uh my son loves it and uh we get to have a great time and so every once in a while we just grab the computer and we say hey uh let's make another story and uh i think there were some pieces of that story that i remember correctly uh that were kind of funny and so as i read it to my boys they were just cackling the whole time they thought it was hilarious. They thought it was amazing. They got to create that. It, you know, it's opening the eyes to those that are really going to be involved in AI as they get older. So just trying to get my boys involved and, and to see that. Uh, next up, I started using a program called Udio. Again, for those of you that follow me on Facebook or on Instagram, you would have seen this. But uh, I was driving down to St. Louis a few weeks ago for my wife and I's 10-year anniversary. And we... Uh, hopped in the car, started driving down from, from Muscatine area where my family's at, dropped off the boys, and she and I went down to St. Louis for the weekend. And on our way down, I stuck in a uh, USB device that I had recorded a song through Udio, which uh, spelled U-D-I-O. Uh, it's audio without the A. And you, uh, you go in there and you type in a prompt and it creates a song. So when I stuck in that thumb drive, it popped up with a song that I had created for Kendra as a 10-year uh, anniversary song, and uh, it was pretty incredible, right? I was able to make a country song. I told it exactly what I wanted the lyrics to be, and it created two different versions. I selected the version I liked, and then I extended that version with more lyrics and kept going and going and going until I got to a full full song. What I found, though, is is a lot of the AI right now that's out there, it's really good at one specific thing, right? 
Uh, Udio is really good with the audio and putting words to muse to lyrics, excuse me, putting lyrics to uh, sounds and, and all of that. But when I asked it to create a song about my wife and I meeting in 4-H, having two boys, having a wonderful life together, it really couldn't create very uh, aesthetically sounding music. Uh, it didn't rhyme. It didn't have a really good tune to it. Uh, what I actually found through YouTube, actually, was I could go into ChatGPT. I could create the lyrics there, tell it as much as I could about my wife and I, and then it created a song in split seconds. Take that song, throw it into Udio, and I was able to develop that song fairly quickly. And uh, it takes me about 30 minutes now to put together a song, just because you have to do usually one verse and maybe a chorus, or maybe just one verse, depending on how long it is, at a time. And then you throw in the chorus and, and so on and so forth. Um, one thing on Udio I did notice is uh, some artists are now starting to um, put out notice to the AI world that they do not want their voices being uh, duplicated as part of that. So basically like Taylor Swift or, or the Beatles, things like that. You're not going to be able to get their voices to come through. AI is using AI generated voices um, and proving whose voice it really is, is going to be a, a difficult challenge in my opinion. However, uh, that is something that uh, that's kind of been pushed out there recently. Uh, and Udia was, was named specifically uh, in using people's voices and whatnot. Capping that story off, I then also created a song for both of my boys. I created one about Calvin, and he loves comic books, and he loves um, just reading in general, and he's got his little buddy Elliot. And so I created a, a song that had all of those things combined, and uh, now everywhere we go, Calvin wants to listen to that song on his way to school. He wants to hear it, so that way he can get jazzed up and ready to go for, for school. So it's a good time there, and then also created one for Caden, my littlest, he's three, and uh, he, he really liked that song, but I think everybody has sang that song enough to him now, he's kind of getting tired of listening to that song, <laughs> but he uh, he still likes it as well, so we usually try to play those in the mornings when we're maybe not having the best of mornings and try and get everybody happy again. Next, I want to talk about AI CRM. So that's actually the CRM that I'm using right now, it's called the Loan Officer CRM. It's uh, an extension of an existing CRM that already exists out there. And it is put on by my coaching group. What's amazing about this is we're able to create the campaigns just like you would with any other CRM. I know there's a lot of new CRMs coming out or a lot of CRMs that are putting AI into their CRM. And it is tedious to build out and to understand how to um, make it work with your workflow or making your workflow incorporate it right your workflow might not use the crm much i know a lot of agents use it to keep track of their people but they don't necessarily use it to uh, reach out to their people and say hey i haven't heard from you in a couple of months what's going on what's new uh, we have a campaign actually set up where people if they have decided to they were a lead at one point in time and then they fall off a cliff don't decide to respond for a while we'll actually send out a, a message every it's like 60 days or six months or, or something like that, maybe 90 days, something like that. And it just says, hey, has anything changed in your um, situation? And you wouldn't believe the number of people that, that respond to that because, I mean, I, I do want to follow up with each and every one of those people. It's, it's not meant to be impersonal. However, if I had to go by memory, I wouldn't remember them all. And the amount of responses we get from that is incredible. And it definitely helps with making sure we stay on in front of our database. But the AI pieces of the CRM then, if someone responds to a message and says, hey, Kyle, actually, I was thinking about buying a house. Yeah, thanks for reaching out. Uh, can you uh, give me some numbers on yada, yada, yada? Well, the CRM then can take that response. It sends me a message and says, Joe Brown has responded to your message. Here is what he said. Here is what I, as the AI CRM, recommend you respond back with. So I've gone into this, the, the CRM, into the campaign, and I've actually told ChatGPT what I want it to say and how I want it to say it when it answers questions. So it will respond to my customer, and it'll say, Hey, Joe Brown, thanks for your inquiry. I would love to help you out. You know, Here's a link to, to book some time on my calendar. If you have any more specific questions, let me know. Otherwise, look forward to chatting with you, whatever that looks like. 
So then there's a button that says, yes, I approve. Meaning if I say, yeah, that response from chat GPT came out clearly, it makes sense. That's what I like. I'm going to go ahead and just click that button. It kicks off the email and then I wait for Joe Brown's response. If I don't like that response, I just hop into the CRM, open up Joe Brown's email and I type a response back to him and I email him. No big deal. But then I go into the CRM and I, or the campaign, excuse me, and I say, hey, Joe Brown gave me this question. Your response was this. Uh, next time, I want your response to be something more like X. And so you can kind of train your GPT to better understand your voice and your tone and what you are really going for. You know, I personally want to get people on the phone so I can better understand their situation because oftentimes through a conversation, more stuff appears than if I'm simply emailing them back and forth. So my goal with those response emails is let's set up a 15 minute conversation and figure out how we can best serve you. And some people's goals are it just let's just do an online application right away. I don't need to understand that stuff until after I've done the application and then I can figure stuff out. Uh, to me, not everything warrants an application. Sometimes it's just a conversation. That's all that's needed at that point. Maybe it's a decision of should I do something today or should I wait until after the first of next month when my credit bureau has updated again and, and credit score wasn't good or, or whatever the case is. There's, there's a million different scenarios out there. And uh, having a conversation really uh, improves that, that situation or that process for the customer. So that's our goal there. So the only other thing I'll say about the AI CRM is when I have people who send in a text message or an email, specifically text message, I guess, my system will actually open up and it will give me a response text message that I can select from one of three options or I can just manually type something in. At first, I said, eh, I'm just going to always type something in. Well, now the CRM has started to learn how I respond and is giving me answers that sound just like me. Like, for example, the other day I was typing a response and then I looked at the three options. All three of them were very similar and one of them was almost identical to what I was typing. So it's kind of crazy how much it's learning me and it's making my life easier, of course, because now instead of typing all that out, I open up that message. I look at those three responses. Oh, that one sounds like what I want to say. Click it, done, move on. It's more efficient, more effective. And uh, it also makes sure I don't have you know spelling errors. It's the best thing about AI. AI doesn't have spelling errors. Sometimes we'll say Team Chester instead, instead of Team Chedister. Um, but again, that's just training it. Uh, but AI doesn't have spelling errors. AI doesn't take a day off. AI doesn't call in sick. AI doesn't ask for more money because, you know, they, they need a raise. AI doesn't do any of that. Uh, and, and not to say humans are not important. They definitely are. AI is not providing that human touch yet. Uh, someday, it, it is going to get pretty darn close. And actually, I've even heard an AI voice answer a phone call. Now, my coaching group has been very adamant that when they have a voice using AI talking to the consumer, that it identifies itself as I am an automated, or excuse me, an, an artificial intelligent person. And if you have more questions that I cannot answer, I will certainly get you over to a loan officer. But there have been conversations recorded and shared with us where a consumer calls in or, or even just practice, you know, somebody else calls in, speaks to this automated uh, voice and the voice maybe has a two or three second pause. So you can tell it's on AI right there. But then it, it answers questions. <laughs> it gives you guidelines. It knows stuff. And it sounds like a real person. It doesn't sound like an AI or, you know, the old computers where it could, they could read off what you typed. It doesn't sound like that. It sounds like a real person. In fact, with ChatGPT, I've now got it on my phone where you can, on the lock screen, you can actually um, put on there with iPhones specifically, um, you can set up widgets on the front of your lock screen. And I can click on ChatGPT and I put the, uh, the one with the headphones on there, which means when I click it, it opens up and it's ready to have a voice conversation with me. It's my open AI assistant, right? It is somebody that, oh shoot, I need to get, uh, I need to get eggs when I go to the store later. I can tell it, hey, remind me when I get to the store to, to get eggs. Well, that's an app right now on, on my Apple phone. Pretty soon that's going to be integrated with Siri and it's all going to be the same. What I've even heard is that Siri is now going to be 
an individualized Siri for you and me and everyone else, meaning we're not all going to have the same Siri. Some of us are going to have a Siri that's a, a male, some are female. When I talk to ChatGPT right now, I have a cadence to my conversation. I can only think in about five to 10 words uh, in a segment, and then I have to pause and continue talking. Well, my OpenAI ChatGPT uh, assistant actually responds the exact same way. He will say five or six words and then kind of pause and then five or six more words. It's incredible. It, he picks up the same tone as me. He picks up everything that it, it's me talking to me. It's crazy. It's kind of like talking on a podcast where I'm looking at myself. And I'm not looking at anyone else. Um, and then the last thing I'll leave you with is if anybody wants to get into podcasting, it's, it's a lot of fun. You know, it's a lot of uh, fun to talk to people and say, oh, yeah, I heard your message. I heard your podcast. I heard about so-and-so being on your episode. Uh, and I really appreciate all the comments and, and uh, things like that from all of you. I appreciate that. Um, but AI is actually helping me with my pre and post production. So I've actually now been able to create a Word doc that has all of my prompts in it. I can take that Word doc, copy and paste it directly into ChatGPT and say that my guest is going to be Superman. And then I give it a website, superman.com. And then it pulls in a bio. It creates questions based on Superman's uh, family, uh, based on their goals, um, just kind of open ended questions. But it helps me to identify topics that are maybe trending in, you know, whatever field that person is in. Uh, I'm not familiar with plumbers that well, but, you know, I'm sure there are trending topics in the plumbing world. Those are guys that um, I throw them into chat GPT. It's going to pop out and give me three or four topics that I could ask a plumber. It's going to be a trending topic. So it's really cool that way. And then on the post-production side, I've got software called Riverside.fm. Uh, this is what I record on, and uh, it's pretty awesome. It allows me to create my little uh, 60 second clips that I post on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, that kind of stuff. I also use it to uh, generate the content that goes below. Now, some of it has to be edited a little bit, but, you know, I post it to the different websites and I get all my all my clips out there. I use it for show notes. I use AI for uh, writing the, the bottom piece below my YouTube channel. I'm using AI for the blog. I'm using AI for everything. And uh, without AI, this podcast would be much more difficult because I would have a lot of writing and I just don't think I could do it. Um, but with AI, it's been amazing. It's been awesome. And uh, it's made life a lot easier. Anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed listening to some of this. If you have questions on AI, how you think it might impact your business or how you think uh, you might be able to use it in your business, but you're trying to figure out how that might work. I do have a, a knack for some of this stuff. I love this stuff a ton. Again, I understand that there are risks associated and it's definitely not something that you want to stick a bunch of confidential information into, but there's an opportunity to use it out there for everyone. If you have any questions, give me a shout. Otherwise, thanks for tuning in this week. Hope you have an awesome week and uh, stay curious. We'll talk to you next week.